Kirk. And this is Troll, our 1978 Trillium molded fiberglass travel trailer. Troll stands for Trill of a Lifetime. Hi, I'm Kurt, and welcome to Kurt and Carrie, my Trillium Fiberglass RV Travel Trailer YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about one of the most common and, I'm going to not say one of the easiest, but uh, one of the most misunderstood um, jobs that might have to be done on, a, on any uh, Trillium fiberglass travel trailer uh, or even many other models that have the same type of uh, window system that we have. Carrie and I just got back from a three-day, three-night uh, trip up to uh, Lesser Slave Lake Provincial Park here in northern Alberta and we had a uh, really nice time until we got home and Carrie came back in to start emptying the trailer and discovered that we had had what she terms a disaster. Yep, that's right. One of the curtains had fallen down. So, now we need to fix it. But first, to take the better part and set up the table so I can get better access back into that part of the trailer. When I'd installed these curtains in a previous video, I was aware that the screw that I mounted back here was not really secure. So uh, I'm not too surprised that this happened. One of the most common um, problems with any uh, fiber, solid molded fiberglass travel trailer like the Trillium or Bowlers is leakage in through the windows. Unlike many of the stick built uh, other style travel trailers which are managed, manufactured from wood and built very much like a house put on wheels and then rumble down the road. They do a lot of flexing and bending which results in leakage in seams all around the trailer body. Um, because the fiberglass trailer, the molded fiberglass trailers like this are essentially manufactured from one or let's say two pieces of molded fiberglass, a top and a bottom, um, the only leakage potential um, in these trailers is basically around windows, the belly band, or um, grates and screens that uh, uh, open to the outside like the re back of the refrigerator vents um, and things like that. So one of the first things one should do um, when you get a new old um, fiberglass RV is check the windows for leakage. Uh, pretty easy to do, particularly if it's an old trailer. Um, you just look down underneath the seat cushions and see if you can see a pattern where water moisture has um, collected and if it's not still there, um, dried and left a uh, stain um, on the fiberglass. Um, you may have to spray the trailer down with water to start to see where something like that is. Um, other things that you can look for are um, rusted or corroded screws. That's a dead giveaway that you've got a problem. Um, this trailer, I have already replaced the seal and uh, the two big side windows, uh, but I haven't done the back window or the, the front window in this trailer. Um, why not? Mm, laziness. Okay, so I pretty much know that I have a problem in this back window. 
so I'm going to have to take the window out and redo the sealant and reinstall it and because the screws go into the wood frame that support the window in place I'm pretty sure that that's rotten and those pieces are going to need to be replaced as well uh, first things first I need to take the old curtain rod down There we go. Now to attack the outside. Okay, here's the deal. Unless you have a huge shop or a big garage with an oversized door that you can get your trailer in, or maybe you have a standard garage and you can take the wheels off and roll it in on tiny replacement wheels or something like that, so that you can work indoors on your trailer. The best alternative is to do this job in one day and get it done. Pick a nice day, take the window out, clean things up, seal it up, and put it back in. Make sure the weather's going to be good because you don't want the rain to come into your trailer. Makes sense, right? So you'll need enough supplies. So make sure you get to your RV supply store and get enough butyl tape to go around the window. The back window on my trailer is about uh, two and a half feet by four feet. So I need eight, 10, 18 feet roughly. The butyl tape generally comes in 20 or 30 foot lengths and you can usually have a choice of color and whether it's soft or hard. I prefer the softer doodle myself because up here in cold Canada um, things stiffen up pretty quickly. The uh, softer stuff generally comes in with a uh, crinkly type paper coating. The stiffer stuff um, often comes on a paper coating. Um, really doesn't matter which one you get as long as you get it and um, use the about three quarter inch thickness. Um, like I say they generally come in 20 or 30 foot rolls. All you need is one roll. So I'm good to go. Let's get started. One of the things that's a dead giveaway that there may be some leakage in your old windows is the existence of silicone caulking that somebody has put around the exterior of the windows and you can see this windows had that um, put around it so somebody's tried to stop some leakage here but we're going to do it the uh, the right way right now another potential indicator that you have or might have a very serious window leakage problem is not only the rusting of screws here but you have to be aware that if the wood inside your window frame that's holding the window in place is not in good condition you might see some of the screws actually backing out losing their grip on the inside of the wood and because of the vibration and the flexing of the trailer the screws actually work their way out of the of the wood and you could lose a window it's not always necessary but sometimes it's a little easier if you can remove the some of the silicone and uh, loose caulking that squeezes out around the window before you try to take the window out
first step is to remove all the old screws. Um, if your window is original, your screws are probably going to be rotten through the core and you'll have to replace them. These ones I've already replaced with stainless steel screws, so they should be okay. screws are out. Now we have to go inside and just check to make sure about one other little thing first. This um, plastic strip along the bottom of the window has a couple of lips here that grabs the uh, window frame by the interior flange. So in order to remove the window easily we need to just take that strip out as well. Side. Now I'm just going to use a couple of small putty knives to help pry the window out of its hole. You want to be doing this gently. You don't want to be breaking anything. to watch out for the cranks on the windows as well. And there we go. Next we have to clean up all the old um, sealant around the windows. Again, I can see here where somebody's put silicone on to try to seal it off.
The butyl tape is an excellent sealant, but it's incredibly sticky, so you're going to have some work on your hands to get it off of your hands uh, if you do get it onto your fingers, which of course with this job you will. And there you can see a little bit of the silicone that's still stuck to the trailer frame, to the trailer shell. So I'll be working a little more to be getting that off, again using a scraper and probably some solvent and various cleaning supplies. So um, I'll do that off camera and you'll get a chance to see what it's, what it's like when we're done. Of course the window frame itself needs to be cleaned up as well. All the tape and stuff has to come off of there. Again, scraping it mostly, then uh, cleaning with a little bit of solvent and whatever other cleaners I need to use, I'll do that off camera. Okay, so we've got the uh, window area pretty much cleaned up, basically just scraping and uh, a little bit of solvent on a rag and uh, we're pretty much good to go. Same with the actual window frame itself. It's uh, cleaned up and pretty good to go. We've got a few uh, spots that might need to be uh, straightened out, but we'll worry about that in a bit. This next part needs uh, some extra set of hands from the inside to hold things in place while we put the window back in the position. seem to have lost some footage. Let's rewind a bit to see what we're missing. Okay, what we lost was showing how to remove the wood window supports. These are located behind the fiberglass in these four locations. The Ensolite insulation is glued to the wood, so peel that off very gently. Using a scraper or putty knife, you helps. Then carefully pull the wood out, starting with the side pieces. You can see here that the screws that uh, were holding the window in were barely hitting the edge of the piece of wood that I put in there. And because it's a tongue and groove hardwood floor piece, um, there's nothing there for the screws to catch into. There's only the retainer that uh, actually caught a hold on that side. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a new piece of uh, bottom piece as well. You can see on the, this piece here the bevel that provides a bit of a um, graduation between the insulation around the window to the rest of the trailer and that is um, also repeated on the end here, so uh, I'm going to, whoa, where'd you go, there we go, I'm going to try to set that up on uh, all the pieces now, and I'm going to use this hardwood flooring for all of them, so let's get that started. This angle doesn't have to be really accurate, so I'm just setting it to 45 degrees, which is the maximum that my, uh, um, table saw can cut and I can't use a guard because of the uh, the angle that I'm cutting at and the size of the piece. So let's plug her in and turn her on.
because this one piece isn't quite long enough to be beveled, I'm just going to leave it and uh, put it on the uh, bottom section and leave it be. I think that should be okay. So no bevels on the end there. And the two intermediate pieces, they just get cut off straight. Yeah, right on. First the trial fit. Yeah, that goes in there pretty good. So now I'm going to get some no more nails and I'm going to glue this bottom piece in this time against the uh, fiberglass outside wall. Let that dry for a while. That should be good. Okay, we're just going to let that dry for a while, then we can put in the rest of the pieces and put the window back in. Unfortunately, this didn't work very well. The glue didn't properly set. I ended up using a couple of screws to the insulate material to hold the bottom wood piece in place.
Okay, now we put the tape around the outside of the window. This next part needs uh, some extra set of hands from the inside to hold things in place while we put the window back in the position. Hitting the fiberglass there. Some of these screws aren't pulling into the wood. We're not quite getting through because of the thick, extra thickness of the um, beetle tape. So I'm going to put a longer screw in to work on sucking that out.
As I tighten up the screws, you can see that the butyl tape extrudes out, which means that it's getting a good seal in behind there. But uh, because it's cool here, I'm going to tighten these a little bit and then let things suck in a little bit over time. Come back and just tighten things up again uh, a few times to let everything settle in. Then we'll trim this off and finish it up. Okay, we'll just let that sit for a bit. So that's pretty much it for the outside part of the trailer repair. Um, some people uh, like to run a bead of clear caulk, silicone caulk around the at least the top and sides of the windows. I am not really partial to that. Um, I would prefer not to, um, but it's kind of a belt and suspenders thing. Uh, give yourself double protection from leakage to each throw. So last part of the job, go back inside and rehang the curtain. See you in there. Okay, so there's a couple of things we still have to do inside here. Um, one of them is to put the screen back in because that fell out while we were putting the window back in. piece in place I had to put two screws in on either side here where our retaining clip was so I need to take those out put our retaining clip back in place
and then we can rehang our curtain rod. Much more secure. And the other side. secure. And there we go. Curtains back hung. Everything's more secure now. And we should be ready without any leaks on the window. So we're good. Now it's just a matter of a little bit of cleanup, get rid of some of the mess, and we're ready for camping next week. I hope you are too. Happy camping. <laughs>